Hello. Today, I'd like to introduce you to a project involving a treehouse with a serene blue water pond in front. I used balsa wood as the primary material for this miniature house, scaled down to 175th. Instead of cutting the wood into small pieces as usual, I created grooves using a pencil. You can also try using your fingernail or the sharp end of a needle because balsa wood is wonderfully soft for this purpose. Due to budget constraints, I opted for inexpensive coloring methods. I typically use powdered pigments for my projects. By diluting them with a bit of PVA glue and grinding thoroughly, I achieve the desired colors. I'll apply darker shades to the backside of the walls before assembling them. I've crafted window and door details on the surrounding walls. Perhaps I'll need several windows to observe the surroundings from above, spying on thieves, wildlife, or simply enjoying the weather and scenery. Now, I'll attach the wooden walls and roof together. For the roof, I'm using 0.7mm thick cardboard, cutting it into small panels with scissors and a paper cutter. I'll then glue these panels onto the roof. To create the landscape, I'm using XPS foam. I've already sketched the design with a pencil. Now, I'll draw directly on the foam and cut it using a knife and heat tool. Scattered around the large tree, I'll simulate some rock formations using crumbled foam. I'll frame the terrain base with 3mm thick Formex. To cover the surface, I'll use sawdust, plaster, and diluted PVA glue. I'll add a touch of color to the mixture. After applying it all over, I'll need to wait for it to dry, this could take anywhere from 4 to 10 hours, depending on temperature and humidity. Next, I'll move on to creating the tree trunk. Inside the tree trunk, I used a round piece of wood and wrapped aluminum wires around it. You might notice that they appear copper-colored, but when I cut them open, they reveal aluminum. I used jute rope to continue wrapping the outside. I used the plastic casing from the aluminum wires to attach them to the large branch positions. This will make it easier to attach the tree branches later. Using sawdust and diluted PVA glue, I applied it to the outside of the tree trunk.
This is the tree trunk after it has dried. I've also prepared the tree branches by twisting aluminum wire together and covering them with a layer of PVA glue and sawdust. The color of the dried trunk closely resembles reality, so I'll keep it as is. Now, I'll proceed to create the foliage. I envision a vibrant summer tree, perhaps transitioning slightly into early autumn. The leaves are still green, and the tree may even have flowers or fruit. I use a hairspray to harden the hair so it can adhere to the foam bubbles simulating leaves and the cotton fiber layer underneath. You'll need to spray it several times between adhering the layers of leaves. With the terrain now dry, I'll return and paint a layer of color resembling the ground. I'll also paint the base color for the surrounding rock formations and the blue hue for the water at the bottom of the pond. There's a small pathway leading to the treehouse, so I'll create the base color for this path. To make the rock formations look natural, I'll add a darker layer on the outside. I've marked the tree's base position to prepare for creating the vegetation carpet around it. First, I'll start with wild grass growing on both sides of the pathway. A mix of green grass, slightly yellowed grass, and dried grass. You'll need to remove any unwanted grass that doesn't fit your vision or the natural setting. I'll continue adding taller grass and shrubs around the base of the rock formations and throughout the ground. Next, I'll sprinkle additional grass in the remaining empty spots. There is a small path leading to the bridge next to the lake. Now I'll securely fix the tree trunk to the ground and add soil underneath, as well as the tree roots. Then, I'll let them dry naturally. I've prepared the wooden frame for the treehouse with balsa wood floorboards in advance. Now, I'll temporarily attach it to the tree branches. I'll create a resting platform for the wooden staircase below and wooden railings. I'll paint the underside and small details before permanently fixing them. If you forget this step, It'll be challenging to paint them once they're securely attached.
We will return to the tree stump when it is dry. I need to repaint a base color similar to the original. The tree roots also need some adjustments to fit properly. This large ancient tree trunk has a light greenish tint to simulate moss on the bark. I'll add more shrubs and bushes around the tree base. This time, I can securely attach the wooden frame of the floor to the tree branches. I'll also add supporting columns below. Continuing to reinforce the structure with additional wooden supports for the resting platform of the staircase. Attaching small details can sometimes make you hold your breath for a moment, or else they won't fit in the right position. I will use watercolor to paint the floor and stair landing. Returning to the original wooden cabin, I'll paint the exterior walls, windows, doors, and roof using stiff cardboard. Areas near the floor, alongside the wooden frames, tend to accumulate dirt, stay damp, and appear darker than the surrounding area. I'll add a touch of darker color there. I'll also add a bit of green paint to the gaps between the roof panels. It's time to lift this small wooden cabin onto the tree. Then, I'll attach the branches with their foliage to the tree trunk. To handle the joints, I'll use any leftover filler and paint over them once they're dry. Moving on to the lake's edge, where I need to create a floating wooden bridge on the water surface. Now I'll securely attach the wooden branches I prepared earlier to the necessary positions. When the tree is as tall as this, not having wooden railings would be dangerous, unless you're a child of the green forest. I'll prepare partitions for pouring resin to create the water surface. In my previous project, the old fisherman's haven, inadequate preparation caused the resin to leak onto the base. I had quite a time cleaning it up the next morning. I'll add a layer of PVA glue to fill any small holes that might lead to resin leakage or air bubbles. After completing the resin casting, I'll get some rest and return the next morning when it has fully cured. I'm back the next morning, feeling a bit nervous. Oh, it seems I've succeeded this time, the removal of the partitions was easier, and the resin didn't leak onto the base although there's still a slight seepage on the sides. But I think I can handle it by either painting the edges black or adding an outer decal. Perhaps I could consider the project complete now, but I still feel something is missing. Ah, uh, yes. I need to add a miniature outhouse below. I'm also thinking of a small house for the adorable dog of the homeowner.
Well, now I need to clear away some grass to make space for these additions. Someday, when I have enough funds, I might consider getting a 3D resin printer to create a dog figure for this model. The lake surface appears too calm, I'll create some ripples as if the wind is blowing. I ordered Mod Podge glue a few days ago, but it hasn't arrived yet. I'll use UV resin as a substitute. Finally, I added a chimney pipe to the furnace on the roof. I've spent many days making this video, and everything was done manually by hand. I believe that taking a second to like, share, and subscribe to the channel might be an easy task for you, but it's a huge motivation for me to keep creating the next videos. I'd also be delighted if you could leave a comment, and I'll be ready to respond when I have some free time. Thank you for watching.